Okay, let's just get this set up perfectly. Okay, I think we got that perfectly shallow depth of field. Looks great, right? What is up people, Dunna here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about ND filters, how you can be using them to improve your photos and videos, and a couple of helpful little tips on choosing and using ND filters. The folks over at Polar Pro were nice enough to sponsor this video and to hook me up with some nice new filters so I can show you the amazing things you can do with them. First, let's break down what ND filters are. There are a thousand videos out there that say a similar thing, so you may have heard this before. If you want to step up your filmmaking game, you have to have these. Make your footage look more cinematic with this amazing tool. And the bottom line is, they're right. But since there are so many of them, I'm gonna try and keep my explanation brief and focus more on the practical stuff later in the video. The short explanation that a lot of us have heard is that ND filters are like sunglasses for your camera. They don't work very well as actual sunglasses. ND filters or neutral density filters are a piece of glass that you put in front of your lens to make the image darker. If you've seen my video on the exposure triangle, you know that you can manipulate your light using your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. But having an ND filter gives you one more function of control, making your exposure triangle into an exposure square. For video, it allows you to keep your aperture where you want it for that shallow depth of field without having to adjust shutter speed from the optimal setting. For photography, it allows you to adjust the shutter speed for creative motion blur while again maintaining your aperture. However, there are different types of ND filters out there. There are fixed ND filters that offer a specific number of stops of darkening, like these Polar Pro Quartz line filters. I have the ND16, which makes the image darker by four stops, and I have the ND1000, which makes it darker by 10 stops. But sometimes fixed ND filters can be limiting. You need to have a whole set of them to make different darknesses, and it takes a whole bunch of time to screw them on and off of your lens. That is where variable ND filters come in handy, and Polar Pro just released these brand new Peter McKinnon variable NDs. Variable ND filters consist of two pieces of glass, and the front one is rotatable. As you rotate the front piece, the filter makes the image darker, hence the variable part of variable ND filter. It's fairly obvious how convenient this can be by being able to screw on one filter and just twist it to change the light. Now in the past, I liked using my fixed ND filters because they often produced better image quality. Quality. Because of the way that variable ND filters work with the two pieces of glass, even with some of the more expensive ones, you can still get vignetting, loss of sharpness, and that crazy black X if you push them too far. These are things that you don't see on fixed ND filters with a single piece of glass. The nice thing about the Peter McKinnon filters is that they take all of those problems and they just toss them out the window. The Peter McKinnon variable ND filters, or PMVND as I like to call them, Name might catch on. Use Polar Pro's premium quality fuse quartz glass elements with the lowest refractive index on the market. Let me break that down because I know it sounded pretty complicated. You spent a decent amount of money buying a nice lens, right? That lens is a tube with a whole bunch of expensive pieces of glass in it that makes things look nice. Someone took a lot of time and care to pick nice high quality glass to make that lens. With Polar Pro filters, you're not putting some cheap crappy glass in front of your nice glass and ruining it. You're putting super high quality fused quartz glass in front to retain that quality. So when they say the lowest refractive index on the market, basically Basically what that means is that it isn't going to ruin your sharpness or your color like some cheap quality filters. All that being said, because I know someone's going to say something in the comments, these things aren't necessarily cheap to pick up. If you want to make sure that you're getting premium quality, you're going to have to pay a premium price, just like so many things in life. I've gradually stepped my way up from really cheap filters to more expensive ones, and I'm super glad that I did because it makes a huge difference, but only you know what makes sense for you. The variable NDs from Polar Pro come in two different darknesses. There's a two to five stop, and there's a six to nine stop filter for different situations. But Dunna, how can I use ND filters to make my photos and videos better? I'm really glad you asked that question, Steve. You always have the best questions. First of all, how do you choose which ND filter is going to be best for the situation? Whether you have fixed NDs or variable ones, it's nice to put the right one on the camera the first try. Eventually, this is something that you'll get a feel for in each situation and you might be able to guess the right filter, but I have a quick trick that you can use to make sure you're right and potentially to help you choose which filters you might need to purchase. First of all, set up and frame your shot. 
Put your ISO as low as it can go and set your aperture and shutter speed where you think you'll want them for the shot. If you're overexposed at this point, you need an ND filter. In this case, I wanted a nice shallow depth of field, so I'm shooting at f1.4, and I'm gonna be shooting at 24 frames per second video, so I want my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second. Now, we're gonna dial our shutter speed up until the exposure is correct, but we need to count how many moves we make. On my camera and on many cameras, the shutter speed is set to move in one third stop increments. This means that every three moves is one stop of light. So we can count exactly how many stops we changed it before the exposure was correct. Once you've done this, you can dial your shutter speed back down and you'll know exactly what ND filter you need. In this case, I would have normally used my Polar Pro ND16 filter that cuts the light down by four stops and then adjusted some settings after that. This works great if you prefer to use fixed filters. But now with the variable NDs, I have the option to use the two to five stop filter and dial in the exposure even more precisely without having to adjust more settings. One of the coolest new things about the new variable ND filters is that they've marked exactly how many stops of light you're cutting on the ring. So setting up can be really quick. Now this whole calculation process is a lot less necessary when you're using the variable ND filters since you have a range to play with, thus making it even easier. With these filters, the two to five stop is typically perfect for most of my run and gun video needs. And the six to nine stop is handy if I wanna shoot at F1.4 on a super bright day, or if I wanna do some creative photography, which brings me to my next point. ND filters can also be used to take long exposure photography. To get a long exposure, you set your shutter time to a slower speed and it captures more motion blur in the image, but it also lets in a whole bunch more light, potentially overexposing your image. This technique is awesome for smoothing out moving water, doing light trail photography, or for trying to remove people from photos. For this use, I could use the six to nine stop variable ND filter, or in my case, I'm going to use Polar Pro's ND1000PL, which not only cuts 10 stops of light, but is also a circular polarizer, and I can cut some of the glare off of the reflective surfaces. And as if that wasn't already enough, you can do some really cool creative things with variable ND filters in video too. You can create in-camera fades, or you can change the brightness when moving from a bright area to a darker area, or vice versa. The possibilities are basically endless. Maybe not endless, but they're pretty cool what you can do with them. But as always, I wanna know what you guys think. Are you using ND filters for your videos or your photos? Are you using variable ones, fixed ones, any cool tricks you wanna share? Leave a comment below and on your way down, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.